Okay, so I have some news. Lily and I got together and we created our very own podcast, The Brown Brats Podcast. We have new episodes coming every single week on YouTube, new episodes on Spotify as well. Don't forget to stream, like, subscribe, and we have all the links in the description box below. Don't forget to check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of What the Hell Are Eating Coaches Doing These Days? Okay, so if you guys remember, I made an entire YouTube video talking about dating coaches and all their little scammy scams, okay? Little courses that you guys sell in the name of Cinderella Princess, Princess Treatment. And I made a video on YouTube about it and it just went viral. I didn't expect it to blow up that way, but a lot of people, you know, respect me clocking it out, their hustle, and just kept it moving. And a lot of people got triggered and blocked me everywhere. I wonder who. And I made that video, like, I think a year ago. I have no idea, but, but I found out this creator, her name is Michelle Diaz, the one that I talked about. I talked about her to it's the end and I'm gonna put the footage of what I said before for context I am NOT anywhere in life to ever comment on people's clothes or outfits but this is such a sad little freaking principle in the dating world of like dressing young dressing like a child ma'am in your grown age if I dressed like this no one's gonna take me seriously ever in life like I'm gonna attract a loser I'm gonna attract a weird man who has a fetish for like teenagers I'm just but then to be in this outfit and then it's like you are trying to tell girls to stay young look young dress very young not a big fan of it but she's not a bad person to follow in my opinion so she's good in her ways of delivering a good message without sounding like a complete incel like, if I have to dress like this to be in my feminine energy please just take a gun and shoot me I'm never gonna dress like this in a million years for a man risk it yes Omega, yes. So yeah, if you want to watch the entire thing, it's this video, it's still on my channel, you can go check it out. But I was just so confused, I don't know why she brought this up, quote unquote, shaded me, okay? And this is what she said. Just randomly thought about, I'm sure, you randomly thought about me when you were busy stitching your corset, busy harvesting the crops in your Barbie fairy topia outfit. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting triggered already. We're just right in the beginning. Just randomly thought about that creator that made a YouTube video on, tw on 2020 to her English is awful. Ha saying I dressed like a little girl because I wore bows, ribbons, and skirts even, 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 she said even twice, even even went as far as saying my fiance is a for dating someone that dresses like that, coquette. I, her English is so hard for me to, I don't know what she's saying, coquette while she followed me just for that style to trend two years later and have every girl wearing skirts and bows. Oh yeah, let's not also forget how days later she posted a pic wearing pigtails with bows. Oh, that was a mouthful. Let's actually crack it down. This is so funny to me. Okay, so when I saw that she posted this about me a week ago, I think I responded with this and this and more of this. And yeah, you can just pause it to read in your own time, but I was just like, just at me. She's she's talked about me in some private secret Snapchat and somebody else had to screenshot that and send it to me. Be like, do you know that she's talking about you? I was like, so bizarre. I mean, if you're so confident in what you're saying, why did you have to like talk about me on Snapchat, which is not, no one's using that and it's not a public Snapchat either. So anyway, let's actually talk about that again. I don't know why she's so triggered over my comment. I for sure did not say that her man's into by any chance, that's so stupid. Um, I wear dresses, I wear skirts all the time. I'm 26 and I I love dressing up like a Barbie every single day. And there are some times I'm literally a BBL ambassador. I am just who I am as a person. I think my issue is that how she used to dress like you know, in her BBL Fashion Nova outfits and how she got no respect from people and how she switched her style and she demands more respect from people now and a lot of men want to like wife her, they respect her, it's more feminine and do you know how there are men who are obsessed with sex workers who like want to wife sex workers? Are, there are men who've, who's, who've done that, like they're not rich or whatever and they've still tried to um, settle down with the sex workers. If your course is putting out a point that you need to dress like this in your coquette vibes to get a man because that means you're feminine and he's not. So how are women who dress like Eminem from 8 Mile? which is my bestie she she's in sweatpants and shoes all the time like she doesn't look like a dude sometimes there are men who want to wife her up then i have friends who want to be in the coquette and then there's me the bbl baddie there's so many different types of people who get respect regardless how they dress i just think it's a little clownish to be a grown woman and be in ribbons and skirts and heels and like you're gonna walk around ralph's walking like that looking for some sausages oh i'm sorry you're rich now and you're married off to a very wealthy man um who hold on sells courses on Amazon on how to become rich. He's selling courses on the internet on how to become rich. Reminder to all of you guys, um, that girly pop and her boyfriend who promotes that they don't, they don't have to lift a finger working in life and they became a millionaire. Basically, they made millions from just drop shipping. Probably would not need to sell you a course on telling you how to become rich. That's if you really made a million dollars. If you, you, you're you on the internet like, oh, I'm so wealthy and my man's so wealthy and he takes care of me, la la la, he's investing, la la. 
why are you selling a, a course on the internet? And why is your man selling a course on Amazon on how to make money? Got it, that's, that's actually how you guys are rich. Mm, got it, okay. Like, do you think we're all clowns? Like, do you think we're all in ribbons and little fairy tale skirts? You can hide behind the whole femininity and like, you know, advice and, you know, listen, I, we all need to make money. I make money too. It, it's, I get it. I think the issue is that your course isn't worthy. Pretty much your TikTok is fully f shaming women for making bad choices and being in bad situations. I mean, I think you have pretty much in your lifetime as well, like been in an abusive relationship and did not have, you know, a good enough self-esteem to just walk away and I think we've all been there. I, I I just don't like her tone. Like I mean go watch her TikTok, it's up to you. It's just my opinion. But I think that I don't like her dating coaches. Like I follow so many of them. I love Shara Seven. Like she's amazing. But I I just don't like her videos because she has this tone of like being very like I'm better than you. A true wealthy person and a true feminine person doesn't brag. Doesn't have to constantly tell you how she's better than all of us. Like I just I don't I don't get it. That's why I think a lot of people just seem to hate her passive aggressiveness. I think her content is like 80% validation that she's seeking of like look I, it's my ring and posting pictures of her house and this and that like, just to prove dumb haters online. Instead, I would want to hear how you settle down. What's your top 10 principles? How to get a man hooked, how to decenter men, how to have good discernment when it comes to relationships because I think that's what everybody in their 20s struggle with. But I just go to her page and she's just shaming a bunch of women who are like dating dumb broke men. We've all been there, done that. This is her man's like Amazon selling course because he's doing the same exact thing that he's like fooling boys and she's fooling the girls. Like I didn't want to investigate you unless you like added at me. You know, I'm like, let me let me get into my like FBI investigation shit. You know what I'm saying? So this is uncalled for. You, I, I was actually very sweet to you and nice to you in that video. I just, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm just like, damn, you both scamming. That's why you have a house and a ring that's big and fat. Like shit, like we can all just sell courses, guys. I can sell courses right now on how to, how to be an exotic baddie, how to get a green card, how do I move to the US, like busted my ass. I can just give you the tea. But let me just tell you something. Rich people do not actually ever want to tell you how they got rich. The second thing also being that when a woman knows how to bag a rich man, like I'm talking about old classic, I'm not rich, I'm not poor. Look at the color of my windows. In Dubai, it's actually heavily raining. So you can clearly tell I don't come from wealth, but I just want to say what I've seen and what I've observed from being around people who are super wealthy and super rich. Game is silent. I mean, they're making mad money, you know, to get together and just be like, you fool the girls, I'll take over the boys. And he, he goes there and brags about the cars and then, you know. Rich people don't spend time telling non-rich people how to get rich, okay? It's just not a thing. It really isn't. Women who come from actual generational wealth, old money, new money, whatever, they actually preserve their little rules and tricks on how to get a man. And they say it for their daughters, granddaughters. They don't, they're not on TikTok. They're not on TikTok with pearls and Amazon storefront mini skirts, trying to manipulate women into spending money on their courses. Okay, number three, a stay-at-home girlfriend that she promotes her lifestyle to be, a stay-at-home wife to a millionaire is also not selling you a course out of the goodness of her heart. I hate to break it to you, that's just not true. Anyone who's selling courses in said industry is actually not making enough money in that industry, so they're actually selling courses on how to make money. They always be like, I'm letting you know the secrets. No, you're not. It's the whole like coaches selling coaches on how to be a coach that sells courses to coaches. It's just a whole cycle. And a lot of times when people say, look at the money I made, look how much I made from courses, the money generator is the course that they're selling. And it's the same thing with her femininity, feminine course. If her course is actually valuable and it makes sense what she's saying in the course, shouldn't we all be married with a ring in our finger? Shouldn't all wealthy men have feminine wives? No. The wealthiest motherfuckers I know, they're in bodycon dresses. Like Jeff Bezos' wife isn't wearing freaking pearls and mini skirts and she isn't a stay at home wife or mom or whatever if there's something that really works why would anyone share it why would anyone tell it on the internet and ruin it it's the gold rush people don't get rich finding gold they get rich selling spades like you're relying on me for money now aren't you so I don't I don't get it Michelle and the boyfriend like I would be more nicer and sweeter to my customers or like people watching instead of being just passive-aggressive because I know they're the ones who are paying your bills um, and paying for your chick-fil-a so I don't get the whole aggressive but genuinely if someone's like anti I need advice on a narcissistic abusive relationship you got out of a can you teach me? I'm just gonna give you the advice, okay? Which I did in a video and it actually went viral because this wasn't a feminine course, you guys. Fucking hell, I should have made this a course. The money I would have made. <laughs> it's six, it's almost half a million views. You're joking. The money. The windows would have been clean now. So I actually wanted to go and check into her, um, you know, website. So I go click on her link and this is her page. It says, live life on your terms. It's the Dream Girl Universe. I cannot believe I'm putting this on the internet. I'm giving her free publicity. Gotta send her an invoice. Um, I'm a luxury dating coach. What the hell is a luxury dating coach? Luxury dating coach. I'm a luxury dating coach. Specializes in personal development. Giving me a designer bag as she's telling me how to get better in life. Like I, I would sign up today. I would sign up right now. 
Am I getting Van Cleef with this? My interest in these areas began during my childhood as I observed my parents' exceptionally loving and healthy relationship. I was inspired to cultivate. Oh, how do all these dating coaches have the entire same story tell me about how their mom and dad set the, you know, standard for them? That is such bullshit because I have another, you know, dating coach after this one that I'm gonna show you guys for you to see. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, I was inspired to cultivate similar dynamics in my own relationships to become a high value woman capable of attracting high value men. Okay, so we scroll down and we have this like module one, two, vision and mindset. Take a look in the mirror. It's giving me Snow White Maleficent vibes. Oh, creating boundaries and standards. Module four is what relationship minded men want. We scroll down, we have your testimonial. So this is very interesting to me because it's just a bunch of compliments grouped in together. And at the end, you just have a random name called, I love that the names are Dariana and Faviola. Just a random bunch of screenshots of people um, sending it to her, DMing her, and she's gone like just six DMs. I mean, not trying to be offensive at all. You have half a million followers on TikTok, just her biggest platform where she sells her course. You would expect to have at least 50. She has like seven. She has seven reviews on her site. Then we have the personal development plan. Important subjects will help you level up in life. Improve time management. I'm fucked. Okay, ADHD, can't do it. Manage stress. I'm Indian, cannot do it. Resolve conflict. I'm literally incapable of being feminine. Like this video is literally a conflict. And aren't you also trying to create a conflict with me? Aren't you near masculine when you blocked me? Like, what was that? Develop a learning habit. Does biting nails count? Picking nose? Scratching ass? No? no. Okay. okay. Develop emotional intelligence. Sorry, don't have that. I'm literally sun, moon, rising, Aquarius. IQ is a bag of frogs. Develop confidence. That I do have. Baby Ansi's had since day one, period. Okay, let's go. Next. So let's click on get started to see the price of this course. Oh, dear Jesus Christ. $99 to tell you everything Shara7 has said for free on the internet. And it's better. Shara7's actually experienced. She has a wealthy millionaire man. In order to elevate, we must determine our weak points and work on them. That's why we have friends, babe. Just get yourself some Aquarius bitch friends. I have some bitch ass friends. Like if I tell any of my friends, I'm doing 50-50 with the boy, they'll actually drag me by my hair. So you just get some mean, honest friends and you're good. Should I spend the $100? Oh guys, I don't like that I'm giving her money. Maybe part three of this video, okay? Thumbs up, comment, maybe a little rich so I can wash the windows and also get you the tea, what's inside her course. Um, I love that the button says, yes, I am worth it. Imagine having no self-esteem. You just walked out of an abusive relationship and you see, you see this. Yes, I'm worth it. Oh dear God. Her advice isn't that bad. I would just not spend that much money to listen to her and her passive aggressiveness if I were you. Number two, Carla Elia. Oh, I do love her so much. I have like anger issues when I see her. She had a playlist on TikTok and it says, lover to wife, eight parts. If you guys have a kid to donate today, if you have some groceries to unpack, dishwasher unloading, do it right now because this is gonna take a while. And I'm gonna just um, take a tweezer and pluck my arm hair out because uh, apparently the dating coaches just told me that feminine women cannot have hair on their body. So I'll be busy plucking the hair. You guys do your fucking chores. Here's my parents' love story. Unfortunately, my mom grew up in a household where there was a lot of cheating. Very young age, my mom never wanted to get married. So after she runs away from my biological father and comes to the United States with my brother and I, she starts looking for work. The person interviewing her was soon to be my stepdad. This man was married and had a kid. And in the early stages of my dad pursuing my mom, he let my mom know that they were married but not together. And because my mom saw it as normal, because that's what she grew up with, she didn't see it as a big deal. My parents continue dating for two years. My dad has been taking care of my mom since the first day he met her. Guess who was showing her around San Diego and showed her a completely different life that she didn't know that existed? The married man, my father. A provider man is a provider man. And when he wasn't with my mom, he was working or with his baby girl. Then my mom got pregnant on the second year of dating. He knew that he needed to make a choice, either stay with my mom and start a new family and start a new life or try again with his current family. The only reason why he married his current wife was because he got her pregnant, but he did not love her. But because he knew his responsibility, he decided to marry her and stay to that commitment. So two years of dating, legal divorce happens and three years of living together, but not married. At the five year mark, they decide to get married. The moment that my parents decided to get legally married, was when we started receiving blessing in every single way. 
just cannot do this anymore. I've literally cut it down. I've cropped it in my laptop so it's easier for you guys to follow along. I hope you did. She's literally the daughter of a home wrecker, okay? You're probably Ariana Grande's cousin, sister, babe. I, I don't know how to break it out to you, but it sounds like it. She's like Ariana's new song, okay? She, we called her home wrecker. She, she released that song, Yes, and music, as so, and your mom's a home wrecker. <laughs> Delulu is the new Salulu. Of course, you have the Bible chapters at the end. You have to always ruin it for us Christians. It's literally Lent. I'm filming this during Lent. What is your problem? Leave Christians alone, bro. I love my mom. She never left my side and raised me to be an amazing woman. No, she isn't proud of her mistress, but who is proud of their mistakes? No, she, oh, sorry. Uh, no, she isn't proud of her mistakes, but who is proud of their mistakes? Me. I am. I've done a lot of mistakes, y'all, and I regret all of them. Somebody's like, not the home record guide of success. Ariana Grande would be proud. It's just, I would literally kill myself if this is my daughter. And listen, I, I don't know. I've never cheated in my life, but God forbid something happens in the future. I'm a cheater. I'm a liar. My own blood daughter is sharing the story on the internet and trying to sell like a dating course. And now she's a dating coach. It's actually so humiliating for me. I just cannot. I th okay, jokes aside though, I do want to um, end it with um, this video that I watched and I just want you to just listen to it for a second, okay? So if you were a young 14, 16, 21 year old girl, listen up. I fell in love. My Mormon faith told me that I was supposed to be a stay-at-home mom. I got married. I started having babies. I dropped out of college. My first couple years of marriage, I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I bought a windshield business. I was 20. My Mormon stake president reminded me that women weren't supposed to work, so I quit my own business, handed it over to my husband, took my name off of it, but I never got paid. I didn't have a salary. My name wasn't on it. My designs, my realtor, custom homes that I built, we sold it and made about a $260,000 profit. That money all went into his bank account. Nothing was under my name. So I found myself divorced at age 44 just five years ago and within just a few months I was living in my car. Right after my divorce I remember being really confident about my ability to get a job so I put together a resume. I remember one of the first interviews that I had and the man actually laughing as he was interviewing me. You helped manage your family windshield business with your husband, but you were mostly a stay-at-home mom and all you did was like the marketing and the hiring firm. And it never bothered me once that my financial security was dependent on that man being in love with me. I never realized that him liking me or not liking me or finding me sexy or attractive or interesting determined whether or not my children could eat. There's not a day that goes by that I don't wonder why. Why I didn't have a fucking backup plan. You can be happy and rich and loving your life like ballerina farm until the guy walks out. I want you guys to imagine for a minute even rich Hannah. If Deanna walked out, if all of his financial backing and he had to sell the farm, and then what does she have? Find another rich boy to marry? And I am so tired of living my own story. We have to make this stop. Raise your daughters to be financially independent. Focus on their futures and educations just as much as you focus on your sons. I wish that someone had done that for me. Um, her story is, I pretty much cut it in short, but you can watch the entire thing in our TikTok. But um, her story is the reality of it. It's not the castle, the diamond, the rings, the red nail theory, all like you've, you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. None of that keeps a man. None of that gives you assets. None of that keeps you um, happy, provided for a long time. Real life will hit you in the face and then you realize the diamonds, the ribbons, and the little corsets, they don't help you in situations like that. So please do not give up your education to be a stay-at-home wife. Yeah, that's what it is. Is. Like I personally, I love being a stay-at-home girlfriend, a wife, but I'm also a hustler. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a girl boss, I'm everything, I'm educated, I have a degree, I finished school, finished college, I have my shit. Even though I did or I hope to plan to be a stay-at-home wife, girlfriend one day, I have such crazy hands, okay? I'm gonna do something. I will bake cakes and sell them. I love to work, so it's fun to be at home. It's so nice to be a woman and just not stress once in your life, okay? Do not be a stay-at-home girlfriend or wife for a bum man. Do not even think about it and abandon your job, your career, or your degree for a man. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and I have a podcast with Laylee, so go check that out. It's our new thing or whatever. We're yapping in there. Um, I'm very masculine in that channel. I'm more feminine here, so don't don't get shocked, okay? Don't, don't be pissed off, but thank you so much for tuning in. I love you, and I will see you guys in my next video.